Hello. Welcome back. Welcome back to Devil and Ebony, the podcast where we discuss and review new movie releases. I'm Emily Clazer. I'm Jonathan Pyle. So, everybody, just to intro the podcast, be prepared for lots of spoilers. We're going to talk about the whole movie. Also, follow us on Letterboxd, DI underscore podcast, um, where we post the movies before we talk about I them. And Carly close. commented on it. Oh, she did. Oh. Yes. Jonathan's going to pull up the Letterboxd. That's good stuff right there. I know. It's yeah. really good stuff. You can follow us there, DI underscore podcast. We almost changed the movie last minute, but we didn't, and we stuck with the one that we posted, so. Per Carly Bernard, <laughs> I need an episode with just Jonathan's unfiltered thoughts on Barbie versus Oppenheimer. Love Emily, but I know Jonathan's obsessions with Gosling and Nolan. Gosling and Nolan, yeah. Well, so. we haven't seen Oppenheimer yet, but we're actually going to see it tonight. True. And spoiler alert, we're going to talk about Oppenheimer next week. So maybe next week can be Jonathan's unfiltered uh, thoughts and opinions, which would mostly just be a podcast of Jonathan in silence saying, um, yeah. That's what I would say? Yes. Oh. <laughs> if, if we got your unfiltered <laughs> thoughts, that's what it would be. I don't really have a filter on this um, podcast either. <laughs> I know. I'm just saying that you, there's not a lot of thoughts, you know? <laughs> I have so many thoughts. <laughs> you have good thoughts. You just, I don't understand how men can like not be thinking all the time. You just don't think. Like the magnitude of <laughs> thoughts I have, they're not any smarter. They're not useful thoughts. I just always have thoughts, you know? And like you said that you just, sometimes you're thinking about nothing. Which yeah. Which cannot It would be exhausting to. to think about things all the time. Imagine how I feel. <laughs> it is exhausting. I could, yeah, couldn't be me. Mm -hmm. I'm built well, different. Potato, petition, tomato. So potato petition. Petition. <laughs> potato <laughs> petition. Okay, everybody. So let's get into the first segment of the podcast, which is what are we watching right now? Oh, right. Um, we didn't watch much because my family was here. And when my family's here, we hang out with them. But we watched two movies. Dos. Dos. Films. Cines. Películas. Películas. Uh, we watched Beverly Hills Cop. It was my first watch. We were like amazed he hasn't seen it. Yeah. There's so many good lines in it. It's like really there's good, so many really like funny movie. just like lines that you could just say all the time that would just be like awesome. I know. You got to use it just in like normal life. I know, literally. And, and then we watched um, Pearl Harbor. Yes, we did. Pearl Harbor. Um, I remember that movie being a lot more like impactful when I was a kid. Obviously. Pearl Harbor and what actually happened in real life is a big deal. But the movie like really had the probably most like ridiculous love story I've ever seen. It was. Is that real? Is that a true love story? No, that is not true at all. <laughs> because it was so like, why did you even do this? Like you could have just had a, like, it's like they were like, oh, we, I don't want a typical love story. You know what I mean? Yeah, let's the just. The normal war love story, we fall in love with a guy and then he dies. No, he needs to die. Then you have sex with his friend and then you get <laughs> pregnant with his friend. And then you have the other guy come back to life because he didn't actually die. And then you realize you actually love the first guy, but you're going to stick with the second guy because you're Pregante. But then, of course, she got lucky and the second guy died. So she could just go back to the first guy. Uh, yeah, no, that is I not true at all. Line. Michael Bay was just like, how can we make the most convoluted romance ever? And he succeeded. Did he actually do that? Because sometimes you'll say things that directors said and they actually said that. Oh, no. I No, that's just me interpreting what, he's, oh, what he did. Oh, yes. That's just what I feel like he set out to do. Mm -hmm. Well, the he achieved thing, it. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. The only thing accurate about Pearl Harbor is the attack scene. Well, actually. How do you even know that was accurate, though? Like, just the fact that they attacked Pearl Harbor, we know is accurate. How do we know anything else is accurate? Uh, I know I the Arizona I, I was I don't know, pretty but bad. It seemed pretty accurate from my perspective. Yeah. Because I was there I just, and uh, I experienced no, everything. Okay, no, you didn't. But I really wonder like how accurate it was. Because if you think about it, like people who were alive during the World War One and World War Two are like very, very old now. You know what I mean? So it's going to be so weird because... Very soon, all of the people who are alive for those wars will be dead. Isn't that weird? The last World War One veteran just passed away, I think. Or not how just. How do they know it was the last, though? Yeah, yeah. Like, I how guess, do you know? There are so many people in the war. I guess that's true. You don't really know. 
that's just the last like recorded one the person that they know about yeah that's just so like crazy to think that anybody who lived through that is no longer alive and i mean i guess you know that's the majority of history when they teach it in school but just the idea of knowing like something that we were taught is very recent history you know i don't know yeah it's just weird like my my grandfather my step-grandfather was in world war ii but he passed away so he's no longer alive what did he do he was in the marines wow or the navy are those different are they the same They're different yeah so well then i don't know which one but i know he was on a boat well yeah that could be marines or navy yeah exactly. i i just know he was on a boat okay. yeah my mom would know okay that's cool okay well let's stop talking about the world wars and let's talk about dolls <laughs> <laughs> do you want to enter the movie barbie barbie directed by barbie is such an american word like bar like americans go er you know what i mean i notice it sometimes that i'm like grossed out at myself i'm like pearl harbor (laughs) that was probably so like delicious in the microphone for everybody i know a summer a summer a summer (laughs) i don't know barbie Barbie. Okay, give me that Barbara Barbie Streisand. intro. Bye-bye. Directed by Greta Gerwig. Uh, I keep she... thinking you're going to say like Greta Thunberg when you say her name. Directed by Greta Thunberg. And I imagine her as Greta Thunberg because I don't know you what know Greta what she Gerwig looks like? looks like. No. Oh, she's what you envisioned she looks like. Okay. Well, I envision her to look like Greta Thunberg. <laughs> so. What? Did you see Greta Thunberg got arrested again? Oh, yeah. I did see that. I wasn't surprised. I don't really understand why that's like that's national news. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen her. She's an actress, too. She's been in a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I've seen her. She, it's so interesting to me to see people who are like that young, at, like directing these movies. Yeah, I know. Yeah, she's really young. Well, actually, I don't know how old she is. I don't know, but, but like, she's younger. think about it. Like in your 30s, directing that movie is just like crazy. Yeah, like people do that. Stanley Kubrick directed like Paths of Glory when he was like 23. Yeah. How do people do that? How do people do that? Does That's that our sense? age. Like, yeah. I feel like I barely, like, know how to talk to people at work, like, at my desk job. Like, I don't even I know, know what I'm doing. And these people are directing movies that are, like, our age. Yeah, Adrian Brody won Best Actor when he was 27. Why are we talking about Adrian? We're not 27. Yeah, I know, but that's still Is young. that the youngest yeah. Best Actor? Yeah. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. They're getting younger and younger, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, she also directed Little Women in Lady Bird. Um, and she's acted in many movies. Like 20th Century Women. That is a great movie. Um, Was she in that movie with um, Adam Driver? White Noise? Yeah. yeah, she was. Yep. Yeah. I don't think she's as good of an actress as she is the director. Yeah, I would agree with that. In White Noise, she was... That uh, was not her best acting ability. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, the movie stars. You probably heard who it stars, but just in case you didn't know. Uh, You're using it stars, me as a stand. stars me as Ken. Um, no, it's Ryan Gosling. <laughs> <laughs> Margot Robbie. Uh, America Ferreira, which is a fun name to say. I love that. That's a great name. Kate McKinnon. Michael Sarah, Simu... Simuliu, Simuli. I don't know how to pronounce his name. He was in Shang Chi. Oh, one of the main Ken dolls. Yeah, he was mm-hmm. the Asian. He guy. was the guy that he was going head to head with. Yeah, yeah. Man. Well, you probably got Asian from the name, but <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. Uh, Issa Rae and Will Ferrell and a bunch of other people. There was Dua Lipa, John Cena. I didn't. I didn't even. There was the woman with all these famous singers. I don't know what they look like, so I had no idea it was Dua Lipa. I just saw it was some random girl, <laughs> some rando. The woman who directed Promising Young Woman was in the movie. She was a pregnant Barbie. Oh wow! Yeah. Anyway, the plot: Barbie suffers a crisis that leads her quest that leads her to question her world and her existence. Short and sweet. Any guesses on the budget? 150 million. <laughs> it's $150. <Final> <laughs> it's 100 million. But uh, that doesn't include marketing, so. Yeah. You always say that, but like 
Nobody thinks that when you say that. I didn't think it included marketing. I think production cost. Yeah, yeah. Like everything to make and like distribute the movie is what I think of as the budget. Is that what it is? Is yeah. distribution included in the budget? Yeah, I think so. So then I, I, I knew what it was. You knew <laughs> what it was. Guess what it has made so far. 100 million. 356. 356 million? It's done really, really Oh, wait, really didn't you say that good. it's like done the best of any female directed movie on opening weekend? Yeah. That's so crazy. That That's much really money. Good. Wow. It's better than they must have, They really marketed it really well, though, because if they I did. had... This is so awful. They marketed it so well that if I had really known what it was about, I probably wouldn't have been as excited to see it. You're at, yeah, that's true, honestly. Because they really, for the most part, kept it very under wraps, like with the trailers they were putting in the movie theaters, like what it was actually about. So then when you, once you find out what it's really about, you're like, oh, I guess that's like kind of interesting. I don't know. Like I remember I when know. I saw that, when I first saw the first ad for it, that like actually told you some of the plot. And I was like, oh, that's not what I was expecting. But then I still, you know, I still wanted to see it just because the actors are so good in it. Mm hmm. Yeah, and the marketing behind it, the pink house in LA and all That the really posters. didn't sell me on seeing it. But the the posters were cute. Yeah. Um, what would you rate it? Three stars. Three stars? I give it three and a half. Really? You're gonna rate it better than me? You didn't even want to see it. Well, he did, but he wanted to see I Oppenheimer. Did, but I more. wanted to see Oppenheimer first. Why would you have a three and a half? Why is it that I'm ranking this lower than you? Because this is like the Goily Goyle movie. I don't know. I still enjoyed it. It was it wasn't really laugh out loud a lot of times. I think your dad said this, but it was just like amusing and it was nice to it watch. It was like it was fun to watch, but I found some bits boring and some you know, like I'm fine with, you know, plot holes, but to a certain extent and like you know with this it's like a ridiculous movie it's more joke than anything else but like some of the bits i was like it was just too far for me like to be like oh yeah sure whatever i'll just accept that's how it works you know yeah mm -hmm. i can understand that there were definitely parts that dragged definitely a couple yeah. of jokes that went on t too long there were some there were a lot of jokes that i really think didn't hit yeah so I didn't. I don't really remember laughing out loud in it. I maybe did like a, uh, you know. I laughed out loud at uh -huh. Ryan Gosling pretty much the whole time. He was the best part of the movie. Uh, I didn't really like his character. I don't know. I guess just what they did with it wasn't what I was expecting. We can get into that later. Later. Later, Gator. Do you have any other intros you want to do? Um. Anything else we just need to know before we can talk about the plot? I don't think so. Don't come to my mind. Maybe. <laughs> this, everybody, is Jonathan's unfiltered thoughts. <laughs> it takes me a while to think. It <laughs> takes you long to think, too. I take so long to think. I'm the slowest reader in the world, I swear. You are. And I, I swear to God, it's not because I'm stupid. Maybe <laughs> You're it's not stupid. Maybe it's because I'm yeah. stupid, but I'm just, like, a really slow reader. You just okay. need extra time to process things. I know. I When I read, I I don't just, like, absorb it. I have to, like in my head say each word do you do that mm, i don't know if i do that Re he's reading something right yeah i know I, i'm testing it out do you read it out in your head or do, can you just like look at it and like read it does that make sense no, like i verbally say it in my head i don't know how so to i do read that. as fast as i could read out loud i think i read a little faster you read so fast, it's annoying. <laughs> we can't look at memes together because, or read do. articles. Of course, we read more articles than memes, of course, because we're academics. <laughs> academics only. But he always scrolls when I'm still in like the top like five <laughs> lines. And I'm always so embarrassed when I'm like, can you please go back? <laughs> but you're probably understanding it better than I do when I'm just reading it fast. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess. You, you skim more. Do you remember learning like... For the SATs, read the uh, first sentence and the last sentence, and you'll get the gist. I actually like scanning, do that all the time. Scanning stuff, and when they made you like annotate, oh, that was the worst in yeah. English class. I know people who like annotate in their leisure books. Like their journals? 
No, like in their like books that they just read for fun. Oh. Like they'll read a book and they'll annotate in it, which I personally, when I read a book, like want to dissociate from my my life. So if I'm reading a book and I think of something and I want to write it in the book, then I'm going to come back to my life and I don't want to do that. You know? Yeah, that's true. Sorry, we're like on the craziest tangents right now. We'll talk about the plot now. So everybody, just want to thank Wikipedia for... You know, helping me remember everything that happened in the plot. Beans is being so sweet this time. Yeah. Okay. So, first off, just a note I want to say, and I think it's good to explain this before we get into it, is the way that they set up the universe makes literally zero sense. Like, Buddy the Elf's universe made more sense than this, you know? Yes. Yeah. Like, Agreed. It's let me ex let me try to explain it. Okay. What do you what were you gonna say? No, go ahead, go ahead. So the way that it works, and this is how in my mind I'm making myself understand, is that each Barbie exists in two separate universes. There's the Barbie world and the real world. And the only way I could fathom this to make sense would be that they're actually in the same universe, um, but in Barbie world, it's like the real person, and then in the real world, it's just like they're voodoo dolls. Yeah. <laughs> so like whatever the kids do to the voodoo dolls in the real world is going to impact the Barbies in the Barbie world. Yes. Yeah. Like that's the only way I could explain it. Um, and also like you're telling me the only way, the only thing you need to do to get to the Barbie world is roller skate at Venice Beach. Like why haven't more people just accidentally like found their way on the way to Barbie world? You know what I mean? Like, that kind of bothered yeah. me when they were just like, oh, go through the magical forest, and then you'll roller skate and at Venice fly, Beach. Go to space, and then all of a sudden, they're just at Venice Beach. Bike. I didn't love that. I wish they could have done something else to, like, get them to the human world. Yeah, I agree. I did like the um, the physical sets behind the, the journey they were going on. I thought those were well done. The sets were cute, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the sets were cute. It reminded me of Bo is Afraid. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It reminded me of, like, Buddy the Elf's journey to the human world. Does he do that in that movie or not? I can't no. remember. Because I, for some reason in my mind, imagine him doing that. But you're right. It's a lot more like Bo is afraid. Yeah, yeah. Beans. She's got an itch. Okay, so let's get into the plot. It starts with a dramatic scene of kids playing with the baby doll in the desert. Um, and then there's a revolution of Barbie um, and how kids can now play with adult dolls rather than babies. Um, and so the kids, of course, kill their baby dolls. It's quite the reference to 2001, The Space Odyssey. And I don't the really... The music and the... Yeah, it was. The obelisk being Barbie instead of the obelisk. <laughs> I just think it was kind of like, I don't know, a little overdone. Like, I had Barbies and baby dolls. Why can't you have both? Who says you can't have both? It's an, I don't know. I guess that was kind of how they were showing, like, the Barbies think they revolutionized the world that way. Did they? Like, they... No, obviously. Obviously That's what not. the whole movie is about. You crazy? That's true. So that's how... Beans sounds crazy. She's making crazy sounds. Okay. So they kill their baby dolls. So they then introduce Barbie Land, where you have a stereotypical Barbie who um she appears to be queen bee she's like the most popular of the popular in their matriarchal society where all the women are confident they have the most highest ranking jobs in society physicist yes they're president, president scientist all of it all of the authors above. um and they wake up every day feeling rejuvenated and they are literally just so happy and so amazing and they have no walls in their houses that's true. I wouldn't. I would like to have walls in my house. That must mean that the weather is just like glorious. Glorious all the time. I mean, it kind of reminds me of like you know the houses in like South Asia that you see on TV that have like no walls, no real walls. They're just like open to the environment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Those are cool, but I also wonder like, you know, I don't know. I like that air conditioning. Suck. I like yeah. I like AC. And I it don't gets like really hot bugs there, in my house and yeah. Yeah, Beans, That's what true. do you think? She that has was no comment. crazy. Uh, fun fact. <laughs> Every Barbie you see in the movie is one, is a version of one that has been released as a toy. Even like, so that means every single girl was based off of a Barbie. Every single girl you see. 
Yeah, pretty much. That was cool. I liked it. You could kind of tell they were going off of real stuff. Yeah, so there was a it was a transgender one too. There's a transgender Barbie? Played by the transgender actress in the movie. Well, I'm hoping that they hired a transgender actress to play <laughs> the transgender Barbie. They did indeed, yes. Interesting. That's cool. Yeah. I didn't even know there was a transgender Barbie. Me either. It released in Is 2022. Is there a transgender Ken? No, and that doesn't also, seem like, very fair to me. Do you need to have a transgender Barbie who says, like, your Barbie can't just be transgender if you want them to be? Like, what that's about it? Is it like, yeah, is it like, like a more masculine bodied Barbie or something? But now that they've made a transgender one, it's like, well, yeah, now they gotta make a male one or else. A Ken, yeah. Yeah, then it's it's kind of one sided, you know. Yeah, they're they're literally if they don't make a Ken one, they're falling into the gender stereotypes of thinking that boys yeah. don't want to play with dolls. Yeah, exactly. Or that transgender <coughs> boys don't want to play with transgender boy dolls. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Get to it, Barbie. Chip chop. Mattel, get on it. Mattel. I know you want to create your own cinematic universe, but you got mean, fish to fry first. I think they did a pretty good job with this. They were catering more to adults, which I think was a good thing. Um, and it was very much well produced like very much a lot of money went into it you know oh yeah do you know what's coming next in the universe i have no idea they have not released that information yet uh, my, but you will uh, be the first to know the insider i've got a contact with uh, has not told me yet mm, your anonymous source can you hear beans's dinosaur sounds on the podcast she's now awake <laughs> she has been awakened from her slumber so i do want to talk about how i loved the set design in this movie all of the Barbies had their own dream houses and they had fake plastic food and they had fake showers that they would just like fake wash their hair. And I don't know if you liked this as much as I did, but I, when I had Barbies, like that's how it was. That's how it was. Like you would have fake food for them and you'd have, a f- you give them a fake shower and like have all their clothes brush like their hair. set up as if you were buying it like out of a box, you know, it was really, really cute. Um, so I loved that. What was I going to say? Oh yeah, the uh, they had to use so much pink for this film that it caused an international shortage of, of pink paint. Pink paint. Yeah. What all were they painting? It was so much pink. How would there be an international shortage of pink paint? Because they caused it. I just don't believe that. That's true. I feel like anybody could say that, but how do you fact check that? They have this whole sequence of Barbie waking up. Her life is just perfect. She like floats around. And it was smart. They were like, Barbies don't walk. They just go, like, they come on, they float off of the ceiling into the car that they're going to. Yeah, because there's not stairs, just like how, mm-hmm. like, little girls would actually play with Barbie. It's just, no, going down the, going down to the lower level mm-hmm. by floating. Yes, exactly, because you would pick up your Barbie and just move them. Just you move wherever you want. It would take so darn long to make them walk down the stairs. Their knees don't bend. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They don't have opposable knees. Opposable knees. Is that what you would call it? No, I'm just kidding. Okay. disposable knee disposable knees okay so while the kens are spending their days at the beach because the barbies are all like fantabulous and they're all doing the fantabulous stuff the kens jobs are literally beach that's what they, they do. just do recreational stuff at the beach um and all they do is try to win the love of barbies over they're just like swooning over barbies but barbies don't really care about them basically yeah so then there's alan yeah there's also alan so there is beach ken who is the ken and he is only happy with barbie and he goes as far to injure himself to be closer to her because he feels like without her he is nothing and all he cares about is pleasing her and getting her approval and her attention um but barbie doesn't like him and she favors her independence and her female friendships um and every night is girls night night so she doesn't hang out with him goyle's night so I have a bone to pick with this part of the movie. I don't understand why a woman can't be independent and also be have in a, a relationship. Man. Yeah, or yeah, be in a relationship. That's a great. Yeah, point. like that's a weird trendy thing right now to say. Like, like in the movies, I I do agree they don't always need a love interest. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like that's like, not necessary yeah. to have a good movie, but that doesn't mean that you should be teaching women you can only be independent without a relationship. I don't like that. I mean, I'm not trying to get political with this. I'm just saying, like, I think, you know, 
it might be getting a little too far in the movies how all they want is independent women who don't fall in love like they should teach women you should be independent and choose wisely when you fall in love who you're going to fall in love with and stay your independent self when you're in a relationship Mm -hmm. yeah agreed i totally agree i think i'm an independent woman when we're not together it's not like i'm texting you all the time and like requiring attention all the time you know what i mean but i'm also just a bad texter naturally i'm not a great texter either i'm terrible at it i get in a lot of trouble for it <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> okay so they basically are trying to use this movie to flip gender roles completely from what they said the real world is compared to what the barbie world is so they're, they're basically going off the basis the writers of the movie saying that all the people in the real world our world like human whatever world what we actually live in live in a society that's excessively male dominated and i do agree throughout history has probably been more male dominated yes um you know with the exception of the cultures who actually prioritize women you know such as the bees the bees (laughs) the bees um and i know that there are some like civilizations and stuff that women were like really really important yeah yeah um so they're trying to use this as an opportunity to flip the gender roles and i did think it was an interesting take just how i like i see kind of view this the same way that i view bridgerton in a sense that like in bridgerton they completely flipped um the way that race could have like been a part of society in like yeah, that time yeah. time period um and i really enjoyed it like i think it was awesome um and in this movie i think they were trying to go for that by switching the gender roles but in reality i, I just kind of think it became a little bit like contorted Bottle, and muddled i i wrote about it later and, and i'll get into it later but um they were they went for a gender role flip i don't think they did the best job at it yeah I, I do have a couple things I want to say later, but I put them in sections that I guess I thought were more appropriate to talk about them then. Um, but I just can't help but talk about it right now because I feel like, you know, very passionate about it. Not really. But so basically they're showing them having their perfect Barbie, Barbie life. Um, and they're at a party. They're dancing. They're having a great time. And then all of a sudden Barbie is stricken with worries about death. And she, as she's dancing, asks everybody if they ever think about death. And the record skirts to a stop. And I just kind of like didn't really think that was the best way to do it. I don't know. I think some of the things they did in this movie were lazy. And I'm not trying to criticize this movie to like an extreme extent. I'm just saying like, is this really like the way they had to show her like, you know, coming to terms with like reality, you know? I'm dancing. Have you ever thought about death? You know, it's a little random. I thought it was just kind of like a, yeah, it was just like such a basic way to do it. I feel like they could have been more creative with like, Mm, Oh, she noticed something like peculiar, like the Truman show. You know, this is very, yes. A Truman show show. moment would have been awesome. Yeah. But instead it was like this huge expose of like, do you ever think about death? You know, rather than like, out of the blue. like it's like in the movies, she, they just handed it to you. Like, Oh, Barbie's going through mental troubles or Barbie's like Barbie's realizing reality. Troubles. But instead, like, instead of like, you know, dropping the hints and letting us figure it out ourselves, they just like dumped it on you like a freight train. I, yeah, I agree with that. Honestly, I didn't think about that till you said it, but it's, yeah, it's, it's a little lazy and a little, um, yeah, lazy. <laughs> I was trying to think of a synonym for lazy, but I couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, after this, like, initial realization, she can no longer, you know, function as normal. The next day she wakes up tired. She has burnt waffles. Like, everything is just wrong. Like, it's not going well. Um, and her feet are flat, and she has cellulite. Um, Big... Uh oh. A big uh oh. That's disgusting. Cellulite. Literally, Ew. every person on this planet. I know, has every cellulite. person has it. Yeah. Um. So. This is definitely Quentin Tarantino's number one movie of the year, just because of how many times people's feet were shown. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Ew. Uh, that was gross. I didn't, true. I didn't need that comment in my life. So. Apparently, in this Barbie world, there's only one Barbie who can fix you when you're having this issue. And it's weird, Barbie. And I thought this part was cute. 
Um, because weird Barbie is basically the Barbie that got played with a little too much <laughs> in the real world, and they ended up all crazy with like cut off hair and sharpie tattoos. That's and probably I'm, what I would have done with it. You know what? I think every person has had a weird Barbie. Or weird now, something. I didn't do it to the Barbie. It was like a handy down Barbie. Oh, I gotcha. I definitely did that to one of my toys. You did that to not one? Barbie, but like. On Playmobil, or I probably glued some shit on to like a Lego character or something. That's why you can't have nice things. That's probably why. I, yeah, that's true. I mm -hmm. destroyed all my Lego sets. Destroy. So, um, she goes to Weird Barbie, who is an outcast, and tells her that, or the Weird Barbie tells her that her flat feet and thoughts of death are caused because the person who is playing with her voodoo doll in the real world is going through some deep doo-doo and it is, you know, expelling from the real person into the Barbie and now making Barbie feel like booty pants. Well said, right? <laughs> yeah, that was well done. <laughs> you can um, quote me on that, everybody. <laughs> Fun factoid. The font used in the film is based on the font that was used for all Barbie dolls, products, and merchandise from 1975 to 1991. The Barbie I logo usually undergoes a makeover for each generation. But that one was the cutest. I'd like to see the others make up my mind. All I know are the like the stuff from when I was growing up. So the Gen Z years. I'm on the late end of millennial, early end of Gen Z, so I don't really feel like I fit into either generation. Me um, either. Well, which I is don't, frustrating. I don't Some websites will literally tell you different things about which one you're in. But That's so true. Like, like I, I, we can relate to some things about Gen Z and some things about Millennial, and it's just kind of yeah. annoying that, like, why can't we just be, like, in one of the generations instead of on the why edge Why can't of we it? just belong? I know. I'm just Ken. I'm not Knuff. I'm not Knuff. So Barbie learns that she has to go to the real world in order to fix this because she has to meet with the person who is playing with her and help them get past whatever they're getting past so that it stops seeping into her voodoo doll and making Barbie sad. So she goes into the real world. Ken, of course, follows her because he's obsessed with her and he's a stalker. And so they go on the little magical journey, as we talked about before, the journey they have magical. to do to get to the real world from Barbie world. And when they get there... Barbie and Ken start to realize the differences in the real world and Barbie world because Ken realizes that he can be confident and people will respect him just because he's a man and Barbie gets sexualized and assaulted. So, um, at this point in the story, the Mattel CEO finds out that Barbie is out and orders the capture of Barbie, uh, but he doesn't care about Ken because... Who, Who cares about, about Ken, Ken yeah. right? So Barbie tracks down her owner and she thinks it's this tween girl named Sasha. Um, but then Sasha verbally assaults Barbie. <laughs> verbally assaults. <laughs> and um, I totally agree with this. Yes, let's raise, let's raise our kids to treat strangers in the worst way humanly possible. You know? I, yeah. I'm in agreement with this. <laughs> like, what? This is a literal random stranger coming up to her. And obviously, like, don't talk to strangers. Um, but also, you know, you don't have to harass people for no reason. I guess I just wanted to show that she was just a teen and just going through that phase of life where they hate everything and everybody. True. And they, I was also, I guess, their same way as like their basic exposition of Barbie going through some mental troubles. This is what they do, their version of a basic exposition of showing what the real world thinks of Barbie. Yes. They yeah. just mm. dumped it on a plate and said, eat it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. I'm going to quote that. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Just dump Thanks. it on a plate and eat it. <laughs> um, yeah, so Barbie then goes runs away crying, which we've all done. We've all had people say shit to us, and then you run away crying. I've definitely done that as a kid before. You, as a kid? Oh, I probably did it, like, last week. <laughs> <laughs> I remember as a kid. I've had so many I times did. at work that happens. I did, like, I did breaststroke for swim team one time, and then... The, uh, afterwards the coach came up to me and said i don't think you should do breaststroke <laughs> anymore i cried that was rough wow that sucks yeah but i only always hated breaststroke anyway so i was kind of glad but it was also like i was young yeah i've just had experiences at work where like 
you get really overwhelmed or like embarrassed or people say rude stuff to you and you know i'm sensitive so i cry about it thank you for the tap on my shoulder you're welcome you really just cured all of my ailments <laughs> i'm coming back to life what can i say i'm a man <laughs> and in this world that's all it takes they fix everything it's enough so it's enough Barbie then gets captured by Mattel and taken back to the headquarters. And she almost goes back to Barbie world like the CEO wants, but then she runs away because she's like, well, what am I going to go back for? There's obviously still something wrong, you know? Um, and she also learns that there's actually no women within the Barbie corporation. It's ran by men. And she's like, what? I thought we were like women positive. I thought we did all these amazing women things. But no, there's but only no. men in the organization. Only men, fun fact. So I guess this is like a hit also. I just want to say this before we yeah, move yeah, on. Yeah. I feel like this is also a hit somehow maybe at like organizations today that try so hard to be like feminist positive, but then they still don't, um, you know, fill their organization with like women. That's absolutely what it is. Yeah. yeah. Carry on. Um. According to Ryan Gosling, he accepted the role of Ken after seeing his daughter's Ken doll lying face down in the mud next to a squished lemon. He took a shot of it and then sent it to Greta Gerwig saying, I shall be your Ken. His story must be told. <laughs> That's so cute. I know. So he was already like he was trying on the fence about it. Oh, so they had offered it to him. Yeah. Imagine being an actor at the point in your career where, where you can you can be you on can the fence that. about it you There's, can choose your project i feel like the majority of actors are just like trying to get roles and get by you know what i mean and gosh he just like like i don't know it just blows my mind being Crazy. at that point in your career it's yeah the top one percent yeah literally and margot robbie said that she found an old bucket list um, of hers with one of the goals being meet ryan gosling while working on the movie <laughs> That was one of her bucket list things? To meet Ryan Gosling, yeah. I mean, it's probably one of mine. Gloria, who is Sasha's mom, and Sasha, rescue Barbie from Mattel um, because Gloria's mom, it turns out, is actually the person that had been playing with Barbie and had inadvertently been transferring all of her worries about life into Barbie. Um, and Gloria realized that, and that's why she wanted to save Barbie. So, at the same time, Ken is learning all about this wonderful thing called the patriarchy. <laughs> and he feels respected and accepted for the first time. And, of course, he believes, of course, this is factual, that mink and horses are the manliest things in the world and that men can brainwash women to do whatever they want. So he pretty much, you know, got the gist of it. Pretty much. I yeah. agree. So um, at the same time, Ken is doing this. Uh, Barbie is running around in the real world into lots of old women and telling them that they're beautiful. So fun fact, the producers or the studio didn't want to include that scene because they thought it was just irrelevant, didn't really contribute anything. And Greta Gerwig said, um, well, what's the whole point of the movie if not for this scene? She wanted that scene in there. I like that scene where she's crying and she talks, she t tells the old lady she's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think that was one of the best scenes in the movie. Yeah, agreed. I think they could have gotten rid of many other things. Yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like that kind of shows, I guess the movie is basically saying, like, all women are be as beautiful as a Barbie um, while using the only human that looks like a Barbie to do it. <laughs> so. True. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I did like that sweet scene. I actually thought it was really sweet. Yeah, me too. But also, Margot Robbie wore 18 wigs throughout the whole movie. Yeah, I could tell that was not her real hair. Yeah. There was, like, no way. It was too, like... It was too... And also, when and you perfect. have such, like, intricate hairstyles, I feel like... I am i don't know what I'm talking about, but I would assume that the hairstylists, it's easier for them to take their time preparing the wig ahead of time and then just put it on the person's head rather than do it to the person's actual hair. Yes. Pr yeah, for sure. Yeah. That would take a lot longer. Is that what you do with your hair? Uh, no, not today. Today it was, this is my natural hair. Oh, uh, no. What do you, do you normally wear wigs? Yeah. Every now and then I change the color. You know. What colors? Mm, black, green, purple, whatever I'm feeling that day. Mm. If I'm feeling happy, I might go for a yellow or an orange. <laughs> If so I'm it's all about sad, your, so it's like a mood ring but it's, with it's, wigs it's mood hair. but what if your mood changes throughout the day well yeah what we, if you're experiencing some mood swings well yeah we got a multi-changing color one for that that's only two hundred dollars 
click the, <laughs> click the link below the video to get your first. What are you even saying? <laughs> it just became an infomercial. Okay, moving on. So, Ken is now in Barbie land. He has persuaded all of the other Kens into taking over. Um, and they have turned all of the Barbies into their slaves, basically. Their housewives, agreeable girlfriends, maids, all of the above. Mojo Dojo Casa House. <laughs> <laughs> did you study that so that you would say it right yes Th- did you really no <laughs> <laughs> the mojo dojo casa house that was so funny i did like that part um his com- ryan gosling's comedic timing is just so good i don't know i'm not gonna lie i think his timing was great but i don't think the writing the, the was good enough for was, him yeah yeah like True. he was doing the best he could with the script that's my opinion so um barbie then arrives and tries to convince ken and the barbies to return the things the way they were before only to be shoved aside and told to be quiet um so she becomes depressed um and i just want to say that if you think about this really think about it okay just i'm not trying to make this political okay i'm just i'm playing devil's advocate is what i'm saying if these roles were reversed and you're telling me that a man coming home to his patriarchal turned matriarchal society if he came back and he was complaining and trying to fight to take the power away from the women whoo he would be evil but then you're watching this where a woman comes home to her society that has become a patriarch and she's trying to fight for it and it's like her freedom is being taken away from her and like you pity her that is incredibly accurate isn't that interesting yeah and i'm not saying it because i'm saying patriarchy or matriarchy is worse i'm just saying these are this is an extreme situation and just because it's a woman you you feel bad for them versus if it was a man yeah that's that's a really good point actually (laughs) yeah i thought it was interesting double standard yeah i know i don't know really interesting i'm not trying to be political i'm just trying to it's hard to not talk about this movie without being political i think it's important when you're studying you know I'm not saying gender studies because I did not study gender studies, but I think it's important to see how it would be perceived if you flip the roles in situations. Yeah, you know? I agree. And I think any, you should do that with any subject. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Put yourself in that someone else's shoes. That applies to, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so, uh, because the men have taken over, um, Gloria, the mom of Sasha, gives an inspirational speech um, about what it means to be a woman and that is what they use to de-brainwash all of the women because that works somehow Mm -hmm. so the barbies then free themselves from the kens by slowly unbrainwashing all the women um and they then manipulate the kens into fighting each other because they're trying to stop a very important congressional vote so another comment i have these free women are literally like being brain de brainwashed, I guess, by talking about all of these crazy things that women have to deal with every day. Um, and to be honest, like a lot of it I related to on like a, a moderate scale. Like I wouldn't say this is it's stuff that like I don't know, maybe it is stuff that affects you every day. Cause some of it was like, oh, you have to be like nice, but you can't be a pushover, like things like that. Or like mm-hmm. it's so true, honestly. A lot of things they said, I was like, yeah, I get that. Like I kind of see that. Um, But they're telling it to Barbies that live in Barbie world who have never experienced this in their society because they live in a matriarchal society, but yet somehow the Barbies relate to it. So you're telling me that basically no matter what, women are doomed to these societal feelings and pressures regardless of if they even live in a perfect Barbie universe. Yeah, pretty much, actually. So no matter what we do, we're going to feel like that. Does that just mean women are wired that way? Yeah, that's kind of... I didn't think about it that way. That's what they're saying, at least, is that women will always be upset no matter what. No matter... Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. I don't agree with that. I'm just saying if you see it at face value, that's kind of what they're saying. That's very interesting. Because they kind of tried to pull real world you know issues that women actually face in the real world and put it on the barbies but the barbies shouldn't have faced it because they live in the perfect world i guess because the kens had already taken over and then 
They started to experience it. That's I true. You're right. Once it. the patriarchy entered, they started to experience it. I guess so. You're right. That's where it is. Yeah. But still, it's it's a good point. Thanks. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Fun fact: cinematographer Rodrigo Prieto <laughs> created a unique color palette for the film that Greta Gerwig named Technobarbie. <laughs> after the technicolor format i, I think it's i thought the color was beautiful i wouldn't say i saw it and thought techno barbie techno barbie yeah the set must have been cool to um to make oh my gosh yeah they did really good on the set design and in realizing like oh we should make these waves like plastic you know what mm-hmm. i mean and like the fake stuff i just thought the set design was great um okay so the Barbies um, are able to regain their positions of power because they turn the Kens against each other um, and the Kens are off fighting while there is a special important congressional vote happening um, that would have taken away rights from women and given men a grasp on the whole of society. Yes. But then, if you think about it, like... You're telling me the women have tricked the men because they think the men are stupid <laughs> into not being able to get rights for themselves. And you think the men are surface level, like... Yeah, they're like treating they them were, like objects. <clears throat> yeah, because they were just like, oh, let me explain to you the plot of The Godfather. You've never seen it. Or Zack Snyder's Justice League. I know, they're treating them... Yeah, they were treating the men like objects, which the men had been doing to them, of course. Um but then it's kind of funny if you think about it, like the women are in there celebrating. Yes, we took all the rights away from the men. <laughs> like it's, they get to it eventually like, oh, we need to have equal rights. But at that point, it's just kind of funny watching it. I'm like, oh, I'm so happy for you. You've completely oppressed like the entire <laughs> half of your population. Like, congratulations. Yeah, I guess other, the flip side of the coin. Yeah. yeah. And then they kind of made a comment. They were like, the men have been given back some rights but not all the rights, just like women today in the real world have some rights, but not all the rights. I did not enjoy the narration in this movie. I don't even remember it. I remembered it at the end. In the beginning, a little and bit at the, the middle, beginning. and at the end. I did not think it worked at all, actually. That's one of my other gripes with the movie. I mean, I think they were just trying so hard to make the story fit what they wanted that they just had to like throw the information at you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely a hit or miss with narration. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think, I honestly think like 90% of the time narration is just annoying because you know they just like needed an easy way to give you the information. Um, But sometimes it works. I know, I'm trying to think of an example where like it worked really, really well. I couldn't tell you right now. I know, me either. I'd have to think about it. I can look that up afterwards. But, um, so... Of course, the Barbies do realize they need to have equal rights. So they start working to have equal rights with the men, um, which I appreciate that they did that. And I also appreciated that, like, you know, Barbie came out and she acknowledged Ken's feelings and what he was going through um, and the mistakes Mm -hmm. that she had made in their relationship. And I also really appreciated that because, you know, two-way street, even if Ken was super mean to her, You know, she was a bigger person and she even apologized for things that she did, even if he did something way worse, you know. So Ken then goes through an identity crisis because he feels like he has no purpose and he can't do anything without Barbie as his girlfriend. And Barbie encourages him to find himself. Um, Then Barbie, I didn't like this part. Barbie decides that she wants to become a human um, and go to the real world. I don't really know why they needed to do that. Why did she have to become a human? Like, why couldn't she just be a Barbie and be happy in Barbie world? I don't know. I guess she had already just been infiltrated with the thoughts so much she couldn't go back to it or something. But And then they end it with her going to the gynecologist because now that she's a human, she has reproductive organs. And so she's a the gynecologist. Happened. Yeah. So. Oh, and then you had the... Um yeah, yeah, I I don't know why they did that. I guess to make it so now, like, she'll finally feel the problems of the real world that women experience. But also they experienced that when they went back to Barbie Land where the Kens took over. 
don't know. I don't know. I guess she just associated more with the real world than the Barbie world. Maybe she did. Yeah. Um, you know, the montage at the end of the film? Mm-hmm. That's of the actual cast and crew's family and friends. I literally said that after I know the movie. You did. I was I literally like, I bet you it's just the cast. I know. But also, I really liked the uh, the song, Billie Eilish's song. Well, Billie yeah. Eilish, she always writes beautiful music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, next week, we're going to watch Oppenheimer. It's happening, and we watched Pearl Harbor to prepare for it. Uh huh. Mm hmm. We should have watched every World War II movie to prep. That it would only take a, a couple that years. That would have been a lot. <laughs> I know. I'm kidding. Okay. My voice is kind of sore from yeah, talking. True. So I'm going to say bye. Bye.